In this video, we'll go through an example showing how we can use the general solution to Laplace's equation in polar coordinates to find the steady state uh, temperature on a disk. So we're considering a circular disk of radius A, which is heated in such a way that the temperature along its perimeter, so when R is equal to A, has the following form, where A and B are constants to be determined. And we wanna find the steady state temperature everywhere inside of this disk. And we're using Laplace's equation because we want the steady state temperature, so there's no time dependence. And in the last video, we have found the general form of the solution to uh, Laplace's equation in polar coordinates, which has the following form. And we had said that each one of these constants could be determined based on the boundary conditions, but they're also subject to the physical constraints of the problem. For example, in the case of a temperature distribution, you can't have infinite temperature anywhere. So that will kill some of the terms in this equation. So we'll start with that. So on physical consideration, we can't have an infinite temperature anywhere. And because we're considering a disk like this, or this is just some coordinate system, uh, and we're looking for the temperature for R smaller than A, that includes the, uh, the origin as a possible value for R. And that would mean that this term over here would blow up. This would tend to infinity as the radius tends to zero. And likewise, this term over here would also blow up in that limit. So we have that all of the dn over here for n greater than or equal to one, so only inside the sum, they have to be equal to zero to stop the temperature from blowing up at the origin. We also need this constant C naught to equal to zero to again, prevent the temperature from blowing up at the origin. Okay, so that leaves us with fewer constants to determine. So our general solution is reduced to something that looks like this. We can bring this constant in to multiply these two. And we'll call the, the new constants a n prime and b n prime. Okay, so we've just multiplied this out into the constants. From here, we can apply our boundary condition, which said that uh, along the perimeter, so along the outer part of our disk over here, the temperature needs to have this distribution. This is u at a and theta. So 
So applying our boundary condition, we have that u a theta Okay, so now we plug in R is equal to A. This has to equal A plus B cosine squared theta. And the idea then becomes one of uh, matching terms on both sides. But we don't have anything that depends on the square of a trigonometric function on this side. So we're going to rewrite this as a plus b and uh, replace cosine squared theta by one plus cosine two theta over two. So matching terms over here with those over here. There are no sine and thetas anywhere in this expression. So there's nothing like that on the right-hand side, which means that all bn primes have to equal to zero according to our boundary condition. And that leaves us the following expression at our boundary. We have our radius to the end. Okay, so this is the condition we have to satisfy now. And our job then is to match the constants a and b with the constants d naught and a n prime. And you can see that uh, the only term over here that doesn't depend on cosine is d naught. So that should match all of our constants over here, which also don't depend on cosine. So by matching both sides or equating both sides, we can conclude that D naught has to equal to A plus B over two. The only term that's on the right-hand side is a cosine two theta. So that means that every term for which N is not equal to two uh, also has to be uh, discarded. Okay, so all a n primes for n not equal to two have to be equal to zero to be able to satisfy your boundary condition. This means then that a two prime a squared, plugging in n is equal to two over here, has to equal to the uh, factor in front of the cosine two theta here, which is b over two. And from here, we can conclude that a2 prime has to equal to b over a squared. Okay, so having found all of our constants in our general solution, this one over here, which satisfy the boundary conditions, we can conclude that the heat distribution in our disk, inside of the disk, has to have the following form. This is B2 
r squared v squared cosine 2 theta. And here, because the boundary condition was given, we're assuming that the constants a and b are also uh, given. So this is our solution describing the heat distribution inside of our disk. And to, to recap, we did it by uh, considering physical constraints of the problem. So the temperature can't blow up to infinity. And then by using our boundary condition to match terms on both sides. And this is how you use the general solution to Laplace's equation polar coordinates. In the next video, we'll, we'll find the general solution to Laplace's equation in cylindrical coordinates.